Okay, folks, we're about to replace the LEDs on the LG 55 LF 6000-UV. took the screws out so I just got to take the back cover off this sheet here comes up comes out of a TV uh, that had a cracked screen and I use these sheets because this, this is what's actually behind the screen for light disbursement but they're good sheets they're clean and it allows me to when I take the screen off of the uh, TV I can set it on the sheets keep, keep the screen clean I use uh, suction cups to remove the screen doing that sometimes I, I clean the screen off sometimes I just blow it off the uh, that sheet just give it a good blow so we'll start by removing the speakers by the way I have an LED tester and what you do is, on this TV, I can see smoke lines coming out of the little holes. Let me know those LEDs burned up. But we can, you can always, always, always test the LEDs if, if you're not sure if the LEDs need to be replaced. I have an LED tester. I, I have mine set on max and automatic current. This what. That's what it looks like up close. If you haven't used one of these on your TV, you haven't proved that the LEDs are bad in the first place. It could be a bad power supply. This TV is known to have a uh, power supply can be flaky sometimes too. Sometimes you have to place the LEDs in the power supply. But anyway, it says minus LED plus LED minus LED plus LED. So minus is the black, red is the plus. And do not touch it, touch your hands on them because it's 300 volts. And basically, if I do like that, you'll see the reading going up. The LEDs are actually coming on, but there, there are some bad ones in the strip for this TV. Sometimes it's, you're not going to get any reading. Also for this TV in the front, it shows circles in the front of the screen. That means the LED lenses have fell off. And uh, that's another indication for LG, this LG model that the LEDs need to be replaced. This TV does flash on and off. So I'll demonstrate that and you'll also see the circles. Or the circles where, where the lenses have fallen off. So it's just an LED circle that you're gonna actually see. So I'm uh, plug this TV up. Stand it up. You heard that? that that's the LEDs uh, Lenses, they just all drop to the bottom. You want to hear that again? Listen closely. Those are all LED lenses. So when I turn the TV on, it flashes the LG logo. If 
eventually it does show a picture but if you pay attention you're going to see circle circled spots that's where all the lens covers have fell off okay so let's get to replacing these leds pull the plug pull the led power and let's disassemble this guy Power switch, RR assembly. Get that off. Put it to the side. Okay. You see, we have small. Uh, small screws all the way around that I have to take out. So I'll switch my bit out, put a smaller bit. And let me look at the camera, make sure you can see everything I'm doing. Looks like you can. Turn the camera a little bit more. everything I'm doing now. Okay. Take these screws out. Uh, one, two, three. I grouped the screws together. So this screw is holding on the cover that covers the, the panel boards, circuit boards. When I pull this, these screws apart, some are silver, silver, some are black. I keep them together. That way I know they went together. Okay. I have a little magnet bowl that I use. And when them screws came, came out together, I group them together on the bowl. Sometimes I set it in clockwise or counterclockwise, and that's the way I, they go back on. It helps, me, it helps me remember when I'm dealing with TVs that have a lot and lots of screws. So now we're gonna pry this up. Have a little tabs. What we gotta do is lift the tabs outward and it'll come up and just lift it straight up. Be sure not to damage this board or rip, rip the uh, Cables connected to it because once you do that, you're done. The panel's no good. You gotta be very careful. And this is an older model LG, and I hadn't seen these in, in, a, in quite some time. And somebody brought one in the other day, so I figured I'd do a video on it because obviously there's more out there still. And people have these TVs, these TVs last longer than the TVs that they currently sell. So I use a magic marker and on I like to put the, the T-Con ribbon cables back where they were at. So I usually write L and R and if the L is facing this way that I know not to plug the cable in that way with the L be upside down so I even know which direction the cable was installed. So then you remove the cables the, L, the T-Con cable, ribbon cable. Put all those back down. So you want to break them off inadvertently. Set the, set the cables over to the side. All right, so now we got screws to take out all the way around. Then we can take the front bezel off. All Make sure you get in there. You don't want to strip the screw. Once you strip that screw, then you're going to have to drill it out. Again, this is a LG 55 LF6000.
basically just peels off. You got little latches. You just lift the, lift, you lift the latch away. Put the TV over. You got to be half of the screen. So that's the bezel off. Careful not to bend the bezel. Then I take some painter's tape. I do this on all my repairs. And I will, I will use that to hold the screen up. Get the screen out. Hold the screen ribbon cable. Screen electronic circuit board. Move the panel. Okay. I'll take a little piece of painted tape and paint it, bend it over and tape it up. Out the way. Like so. And I like to clean the screen. I'm going to put my suction cups at. But sometimes screen is dirty you put your suction cup on that area the suction cup releases then you drop the screen game over I'm not worrying about cleaning the whole screen I'm just cleaning the area where I'm going to put the suction cup okay. suction cup is nice and clean I use a uh, clean screen clear screen Spray for cleaning uh, LED LCD screens. And then put suction cups in place. Uh, you don't need super expensive suction cups. You know, you got these from Harbor Freight. Just look straight up. That's the screen. Whole screen is off. Walking over and placing it on my white sheet that I told you about. Suction cuts off, set them to the side, and so you can see where I put I put the screen over there. So now I'll be putting this layer over here also. As you can see, there's the white piece out that I actually set the screen on. I have more of these, I save them just to do TV screens. Other one, and I just lay it right on top of this one. That also protects the screen. Careful not to hit the ribbon cables. So now when I take this off, I can sit it on top of this. It looks a little icky. I got some alcohol wipes. I can just get another one. I can let this one go, but I'll hold on. I'm, I'm not going to go through all that. Not for all that. Wipe some areas down. Just in case. Just in case. other videos out on how to do this particular TV but I'm not sure if they go into detail about how to keep the screen safe and clean um, so you're getting another point of view so now I can lift this up and handle this almost any way I want to handle it because the screen is gone and these have little tabs little tabs right there and see I can just take my fingernail and lift them but if I did that every day on TV, I, my fingernails would be jacked. So I use a tool to do that. Just to lift that bezel off. The bezel keeper, I guess. This is what the bezel connects to. and Or the screen seat. You call it the screen seat too because the screen sets in it. 
try not to break them off. Sometimes they dry ride it and they'll break, but it is, you still can put it back. I just go, I just go gently with it. Get them going. off, be careful not to let it flex or to break. Okay, so now this is the bottom of the TV and being that it's small, I just spin it around. And that's the top right corner of the TV. I always mark the top right corner with a magic marker. That way I can put the sheets that were under the screen back in the, in the same direction so they're not rotated or flipped or anything so that top right corner I put a piece of tape on there and then I mark it but I know that's the top right corner so when I put it back I put it back where it was at uh oh little piece of tape there I don't do all four corners, but I do at least three of them, and, and it works for all size TVs, whether it's a 70 inch or 80 inch. And there you go. I lift it up lightly because if that underlit layer will crack too, and then it'll, you're done because it'll it'll show a crack in the picture. So I lift them up and voila! Look at that. Look at all the lenses. So even if your TV does come on and you see circles in the picture, you know that the lenses have fell, fell off. So you gotta replace the LEDs. They pretty much just come off. Look at that, see that? I can just lift them right off. These are on their way. That's from heat cooking them. So pretty much it's garbage. I haven't figured out another use for these, so they're going in the garbage. these TVs if I had been saving these things I would have a thousand of them so anyway you got some plastic offsets that, that, that supports the back of the screen you got to take them off I usually don't take them all off I'll take them off so I can do like one half and then take the other half off so I see there's a row right down here in the middle four in the middle and then there's three right here there's actually five through this middle so that's five of them I, I can actually leave, leave. I'm gonna take them four off, them three off, and then these three off, and I'll flip the sheet over, change this side, then flip the sheet over this way and change that side. And then we have these also that you gotta squeeze out, and I'll use um, some uh, needle nose pliers for that. 
but the sliding ones they have they have a, a a catch right there and then they have a catch in the front so there's a catch in the front so basically what i do i lift the catch up in the front right here while lifting the catch up in the back and then moving forward i don't know if you was able to see that let me turn it around this way but i already took one out i just looked at the camera and showed you this so i'll do another one so i'll do this one here so the square end is the is the front and i just i just lift it up a little bit not to break it and then the point in in the back there's somewhere something you can pull away and then you just slide it forward just like that now these i said i wasn't going to take off but for demonstration purposes i've done it already so i'm going to go ahead and do them five i'll leave the other middle row right, let's see and these behind see those are behind the circuit board those, those the ones i didn't want to mess with are behind the circuit board but there's one two three and there's a fourth one behind that circuit board so some this this board um, may have to be removed just to get the ones I need out to get to them. So let me go ahead and take these out. Turn this around this way so you can see what I'm doing. Lift up, one fingernail. Lift, pull away in the back the same way, and just slide it back forward. In here, lift up, pull back, and slide. Now I'm sliding that way. Comes right out. All right, so this one here, this one on the end down there, my hand. like me you can just reach over there and feel for it without even looking. Again I've done each I've done hundreds of each TV lots of these TVs. So I pretty much so you can see what I'm doing, just do it. Alright, I'm gonna drop that one. Alright. So I have one more right here and that's because it's behind that board. So even the, here's, here's one of the bad LEDs, by the way. See, it's black and burnt. It's one of them that burn up. Okay, so we're going to flip this guy over. And this board has the uh, has to be removed in order to get to the other ones I need. Mean, power supply board has to at least be slid out the way a little bit. Needle nose, squeeze them, close, and push them through. That one just went through on its own. Push them through.
one under the T-Con board under this corner right here. Try not to jack the T-Con board up. So you won't have a picture. I do it this way. That way you're not flying all over the floor. And you got to chase them down. They always see if you do it that way, they'll fall somewhere. You'll never find them until you get the TV back together and two days later. I do it this way, that way they fall right on my cover. I'll lift this screen, lift this back up and just pick them up. Okay, that should be all of them. So just lift up. Now the whole white sheet wanna come off. See that? Because that's a good job with the whole sheet on. Just collect them. I use the same procedure for a lot of other TVs. No matter what brand or model, they all use the same concept. push instead of pulling or snap instead of snip but they pretty much do the same thing all the TV brands so I missed one right here I didn't see that one I hope it ain't behind the main board it's not this one uh sound like another lens just fell off this one I'll just get it by hand grab it by hand all right now Lift half up, half over. Lay it down with my little tool, and we we'll have to peel these off. They have A, B, A, B, so you got to put the strips back the way they were. So what I do is, just in case I forget, or sometimes they'll have the, it printed on the metal, and sometimes they won't. But I don't have time for that, so I just go ahead and put A, B, that way I don't make a mistake, A, B, so I know how they went. And if I remove these little clips here, uh, I try to leave them where I, where I took them apart at. The clips, um, I'm gonna have to move the camera because I want to get you a closer view because the clips are kind of funky. You have to squeeze the clip clips together and then lift up on them. Sometimes they're kind of tight after sitting for so long. But lift it straight up. See that? I'm going to set it down. And that's what I like to do. And I like to leave where it came from. That way I know. That, and that's like a. That one is just a return. Okay. I'm going to do the same here. On this end. It up, lift it up, leave it right in place. So now, remove the strips. I start it and then I just pull it. Those things are going to pop everywhere, that's why we hit and broke them off, and why I got to chase them around. The strips that I re received, they got adhesive on it. So, I mean, there's adhesive there too. When sometimes this comes up, sometimes it don't. I, don't. I haven't found that it matter one way or the other whether I should remove it or not. So, I pretty much just leave it in place if it don't, if it don't tear up. By replacing these strips, you get a TV a whole new life. And however long it lasts the first time, it should last just about that long again. That's the burnt LED. Some of these LEDs I can actually heat up and take off and reuse them. So, you know, sometimes I throw all of them away. Sometimes I may keep one or two just so I have some spare LEDs in, in case one day I can't get these strips brand new. Strips brand new from Shop Jimmy. So 
I don't put in used trips and uh, I don't try to just replace the bad uh, LED for 90% of the time. When one LED goes bad, the other ones aren't far behind. 99% 90, of the time. So, I mean, if, if, if you can't get new strips, then yeah, you'll have to repair the individual strips. But, but I believe you'll be going back in that TV soon to replace some more. together and then I test them make sure they all light up and then when you get the TV put back together and find <laughs> that the LEDs aren't lighting up and you gotta say well I wonder if I did something wrong you gotta pull the TV all the way back apart so let's find A's we need two A's and two B's That's a B. It's Mark B on it. So we got one B that's going to go there. There's an A. It's Mark A on it. And that's going to go here. I need two more. This is an A. That's going to go over here. And the B is longer, so I don't even need to look because I know the B is longer. And that's, that's going to go there. So what I like to do before I actually take the adhesive off and stick them uh, to, the, to the frame, I like to go ahead and just pre-put pre them together with the connections and then fire them up with my LED tester to make sure they're actually good. Because once you stick that ad adhesive on, then it makes it I think there's one there's one more row that I need to connect to this one and that's here but I may be I may be able to fire it up anyway that's that line coming from on this side two strips I should be able to test them out without that, that last row connected because there's two rows of strips connected and then there's three rows on this TV and usually it wants all the rows in, in order for it to function properly but this is the last of the rows so let me see what happens here okay they light up so I'm not sure if you can see that uh, back see that you can see it so I'm going with my tester to the positive contact and a negative contact and you see that first row light up lights up that first set of LEDs lights up now they all light up See that? They all work. So now I feel comfortable with with taking the uh, strips off, taking off the sticky part of the strips, and sticking them on for permanent insulation. So basically, I just flip them over, peel the stuff off. Now, there's little holes. There's little uh, little holes little protrusions that go through the hole so the hole here has to line up with the protrusion and that's how you get them in the proper place so if there's a long oval shape I don't use that one to line it up because that that protrusion can fit anywhere along that oval uh, slot 
Uh, so I always go by the one with the circle. And then that one will make sure this goes in place because this one has two protrusions. So always use the one with the circle protrusion, circle hole on the strip and get that one in place and then you then use that one as a guide for getting the rest of them in. So I'm gonna line that protrusion up with that hole. Um, let me take the back off one time so I can place and show you because you may not understand what I'm saying. See, there's a protrusion right there. And there's a hole right there. Uh oh. There's a hole right there, and I gotta line it up and get it perfectly over top. Okay? So that's what I'll have to do in place. And then if you notice, that's an oval shape, and that's an oval shape, but that can fit anywhere along there. But if you get that that lined up properly, then that's going to be perfect. Okay, so hopefully you get the picture. Idea of what I'm talking about. Right. Put these LED strips in place. And pushing up through the protrusion so I know I'm lined up. And then I just center that one perfectly, mash it down. This install. Once I pop those connectors on, I try to just go ahead and leave them in place because you want them nice and snug and tight. So I, you got to plug this into the other one, real firm, and then drop down on the protrusion and hope and make sure the protrusion is evenly centered in the slot. Simple as that. Same way with this one. This one has a circle on this end and a circle there. All the A's have that one circle. All the A strips. Line it up. This side is done. Just that simple. Flip it over, and if you're accurate, the sheet will fall right on top. The sheet has up and down written on it, on the on the little splits. You got to make sure you put that back properly too. Up, and down is actually written on it. I don't know what 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 difference it makes, but it's there. So, <laughs> all right. So I'm going to do the other side. Once I do the other side, then I'm going to put the plastic hold down back on. And then, then I'm going to test the LEDs once again. When they're completely installed. Check and make sure you're not leaving any broken lenses in. Also, oh, and it's this way. And you hold it down with your trusty screwdriver around here. them all because they're gonna pop off anyway and fly all up in the air and all the floor on the floor. Go ahead and get them all. That way you gotta chase them down with you. Garbage. Garbage. 
Right. So we're gonna mark A and B just like before. Disconnected and disconnected and in place. In their place and you know where they go. Squeeze in and pull up. Magic marker. A, A, B, A, B, A, B. Can't go wrong. All right. Where did it go? There it is. Okay, let's take this up now. Right, let's check this up. I'm not that easy to get up. People got their money's worth out of this TV. This TV LEDs last way longer than the newer LED TVs. Oh boy, this is really stuck. So what I do is, this right here is where the uh, power source come in from the back of the TV. I just pull that wire through if I can on most TVs. That way I can test the whole set of strips. So that wire is under here. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Look, I remember to get. It's not like it came out on its own. Here's the wire that goes to the LEDs that plugs to the power supply. Basically, you can take it and pull it through, just like so. Temporarily, that's a temporary thing. Temporary thing where I do so that I, I can directly drive the whole set of LEDs. Sometimes I just leave it. Sometimes you can leave it fed through. Also, it depends on you. Leave it fed through. I'm putting it back through. Uh, that went too far. That goes about right there. I put it back through, and it's out in the back. Okay. All right. So hopefully you was able to see that on camera. Okay, because I'm over there now. Let me make sure you're able to see over there. Sure you can. Okay. All right. B. This is a B. Place B in place. This is another B. Let's go here. A is short. A is going to go here. Go ahead and plug them together. B is going to go here, and the rest of A's. This one shipped with the with the blades a little bent, so just straighten them out. Try not to break them off, because then you're going to have to do some hard wire soldering. Like I said, I put them together, and I like to fire them up together. Make sure all connections are working and everything. Alright. 
cool up when I'm thinking about it. Let's put the wire back on on this end. You gotta push it in, and hopefully you wanna hear it snap. Sometimes it'll snap. So you gotta really push it. Some, some of them I've gotten where it barely fit. And I would have to force it down with a needle nose pliers in, into the slot. But these are fitting pretty well. Pop them right in. It. We turn on here. Hello. Hello. Yes. Working on it now. That was the customer asking, is their TV ready? <laughs> I'm fast, but not that fast. Okay. So, diamond circuit, LED tester. And go directly to the, to the wires. That whole half, that, that side is lightening up. Let's, let's move this out the way first. So you can actually see that side. See, they're not in place yet, but they did light up. So I, I'll, I'll hit them one more time once I get them all taped in place. That was that one extra one I had to do over there that belongs to that the rows the road back there. Okay. Okay, so those all light up. It's three together and then it's two together on this TV. Two strips and then three strips. So they they work, they're fine. What I will now do is get them stuck on and then, then we'll fire the whole screen up at one time. So remember the A has a circle, so always stick the A's on first and then follow suit with the B's. one is on. I ain't nothing I can do about that one. It's in place already. One of them stuck on before I was ready. And let me check and make sure it's okay before I close it up. Okay, it's fine. One of them stuck on before I was ready. Can't, you don't want to pull it back off. So you got to get it right the first time. I mean, it, it, it's, it's where it belongs, but I, 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 I strive for perfection. Right, perfectly centered. I mean, it can be off a little bit because basically it's just shining light through the lights dispersing uh you can't see the actual strips 
in the picture, so you'll never know if, if it's off uh, eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch on a slant or something. You'll never notice that. You can't see it. But I know. more to go. We're going to get this TV back together. I believe this adhesive also acts as heat sink. You know, you can buy this the heat sink adhesive. So it dissipates the heat that the LEDs produce. So it sends the heat to the metal back that we're sticking it to. And help them stay cool. Okay, putting everything back together that's up. Just gotta go back over the little catches. Okay, that's back in place. This should be up, not down. So, okay, I'm happy. So, one last test and then we're gonna put it back together. So let's put this back up to the next TV. Needs to be tested. Now I may make a video on testing TV LEDs because uh, a lot of people think that they can just replace the power supply and the LEDs and magically uh, start working and they haven't even tested the LEDs and 90% of the time the LEDs are bad on the TV and not the power supply. And you have no no picture with a status light. Okay, so we're gonna be putting these back together. They all went that way. Uh, has a little catch up under here. Has a little butt here. So it actually get them all back in place. Just push it, just drop them in a the little hole and slide them. The ones on this side point in the same direction, the ones on that side. The pointy side going that way. Them back in the place. I think these help the screen not flex in if somebody happens to push on the screen. They'll support the screen in the back. And or I guess if they have any type of vibration from sound or something, they'll keep the screen from pulsating along with the sound. These back in. Sometimes these, when you squeeze them together, the little wings stay squeezed in. So what I like to do is I like to spread them back out. So that way they lock in really tight. Get a little pair of tweezers or a screwdriver, and. I go right inside and I just open them up a little bit. Just a little bit. Not too much, you don't want to break them. Just pop them back in place. So I know there's other videos on YouTube with this 
same set TV, but there might be something. That, when I when I watch YouTube videos, there's always something that's left out. That if you try to do a project yourself, you'll find out. <laughs> well, they didn't show this in the video. So I'm gonna try to show every little thing I do. And it all makes a difference. The worst thing is to put the pop these back on, get the TV closed and the screen back on, and it just falls out. Now it's rattling around inside the TV. And and the job it was doing was keeping the sheet in place. The sheet might start leaning over in that spot or sagging. So I'm ensuring that that don't happen. This one is squeezed together really good. So this would have been one that would have fell right back out. We're doing this lightning fast too. Everything a good inspection, everything back in place. Make sure you put everything back because it's another worst thing to get it back together and realize you've got something in there. Give it a little blow. Now, so this is the top right here. Let me make sure. No, I think this is the. the Tcon's always on the bottom, so that's the top right over there. Remember, I marked mark the uh, light disperser and the uh, color sheets so that I put it back the way it goes. So I just line it up with the little tab that they sit on. And if you tape it pretty good, it's, 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 it's really easy just to drop it back in place. So drop it back in place, make sure everything is lined up and in place, and then I just I start by pull the tape back off. And I try to pull the tape off in one piece because most times I can use this tape more than once. And I believe I got another LED job. Yeah, I got another one coming. One of the LEDs to come in. So I, I save this tape. I use the tape as many times as I can. This tape I you can never you can buy is paper tape. I use it for a lot of stuff. Painters tape. I call it paper tape, but it's actually painters tape. Really good stuff. It sticks multiple times. You pull it off and use it again. So get the little hairs or whatever off there. And put the screen cap seat or bezel back on. Then put it back on the way you took it off. Same direction. This one has opening gaps for the TV screens. Wired wire connections going to the TV screen's uh, drive board. There's no gaps up there. So that's how you know this goes to the bottom. So just line them in place and snap them on. You gotta make sure they snap on even too, because they're uneven. You're gonna try to put TV together, TV ain't gonna go squeeze together, right? You're gonna you'll actually crack the screen. So after I snap them in place, I go all the way around and make sure all of them are literally snapped on. And not partially snapped on. See that? I can still hear it snapping. But I'm a, I'm gonna I'm gonna inspect it with my eyes. So see that came back up? Not supposed to come back up. If you grab it, it's not supposed to come back up. You could remember you gotta peel it free. So then I check. 
All those on, all those on. Down the side, those are on. Down that side, those are on. This one isn't on on there. Look at that. Yeah, so you gotta check. Make sure you check. Alright, so now everything is on. I can put the screen back in place. Lift this up. I'm not gonna be needing this anymore today. Stay clean because I have them mixed in in between others. All right, the screen is backwards. That's why I took it off. So let's turn the TV around. I can't do that with a smaller TV, a bigger TV though. I would have to walk around with the screen. But I try to travel. I try not to travel too much with the screens. Flip it up over the screwdriver. And I usually set the cable in, the end with the cables. I usually push that all the way to the edge because they got to have be able to flap over. And check all the corners and make sure the corners are perfectly in, in the seat. Because if not, when you put the bezel on, it's going to chip or cut, crack off the corner of the uh, screen. And then you're done. The screen is no good. So it's worth time just it's worth it just take the time and look and make sure everything is even and make sure everything is flush this way so that this is easy to flop back over and it's not stressing it, those cables those cables can't be repaired once you damage them so I'm take this off set it over here sometimes I get up under here and put the cables back in place. Just fold them up and slide them in. Fold them up, slide them into their, their little holders. Now we can put the outer bezel back on and screw it down. The screen is filthy too. This one you got to start from the front, get the top rather, get the tops down in place, and then the back will drop in place. Just be gentle. Make sure it's even. This one we want to go in, it's in now. And make sure it's even and flush. And you put some screws back in. Before you flip it. You don't gotta be tight, super tight, and driven in.
that's all the ones that go around the screen. The bottom ones I didn't put on yet because I still gotta put that those metal covers back on. So I'll flip it over real softly, pivot it, and then slide it in place. And then make sure everything looks good. Front bezel. Looks good. Okay. Okay. So now the ribbon cable back, left and right. Right. Power board back in place. Be careful not to grab this power board in the wrong spot because those capa that capacitor right there may have a charge still on it. And that charge will give you a hell of a shock. And you'll drop the board and crack the board and then you'll have to buy a new board. Now with this board here, um, Sometimes the, uh, I redo the solder contact. If I see dots here, I clean those dots off of there, those discharge marks, and then I redo the solder contact on the board. And I'm gonna take the camera off and show you what I mean. Solder con those contacts are ground. Those contacts there, there, see how they, they're flattened out? I'm going to do something about that. Uh, those are actually burnt. They look burnt. Those there, they look burnt. Or pitted. I'm going to fill those in nicely. And if you look closely, see the three dots? See the four dots? See the dots? Those are discharge marks. That's carbon. that where there's carbon there's resistance so there's resistance added to the circuit it shouldn't be in the circuit so i'm gonna clean that off with a, a wire brush and then and i'm gonna redo these solder contacts add a little solder to them you know make them round again I've had TVs that I've repaired, some TVs I've repaired, that that's all that was wrong with it was it, it you know, it had tissue, charge marks, and had issues with the ground. I cleaned them off, I got a stiff wire brush. Clean them off. Little pieces of metal that might be generating ain't hurting anything. Take it and just blow it in the wind. Bye bye. So I'll be right back. Let me redo the solder, connect the solder points on this board. And I'll show you the end result.
See what it look like now? They're nice shiny little balls. See that? See the nice shiny little balls now, see? Here's the other corner. Nice shiny little balls. Okay. Let's put this back in place. That, that capacitor there, when it's holding the charge, you gotta discharge it. And I didn't this time, but I use this resistor right here. And uh, I forgot the value of this resistor. I'll measure it. But, it, but, but it's a, a large wattage resistor. And I don't remember the wattage either because the, uh, the, the writing is burned off here. The label is burned off from me touching it sometime. And it's 466K. So it's almost a 500 kilo ohm resistor, but it does say four six, that's a six. You can barely see it. Um, probably a five or 10 watt resistor. And basically I just put it across the capacitor legs and let it sit there for a while with no power going in. If there's power going in here and you touch this, this resistor is gonna get hot and it's gonna burn your finger. So no power going in. screws back in place. Let me change this to the bigger bit. Uh, where would my bit at? Change that to the bigger bit. Do my screws there. Even uh, evenly. Not putting them in super tight. My my drill is set on one. My screwdriver is set on one, so it's not going in super tight. All right, let's put the LED cable back where it belongs. Take it back down. Back down, put the speakers back in place, the power button back in place, put the cable shields back in place. So it's like this here. Sometimes I mark this left and right, but most times you don't have to do that with this here, or they go back where they would. They're only going to go in one way. Snaps into place. Snaps into place. All right. Put those screws back. I'm not going to change that bit out again, so I'll just use this one. The long black screws go in the front. I like using my other screwdriver as fast as this one. It takes a minute to get the job done. It takes a minute. Silver ones go on top. One's on top, black's on the bottom. Okay. Easy peasy. Let's put this back in place. Put that back up. Speakers back, right hand, left hand. 
goes up under there like that there, and then pops down. Try not to damage the speaker. Goes under, and then snaps into place. Okay, TV's back together, and let's see how she looks. <clears throat> Power plug in. TV's already on, turned on automatically. We have a screen, we have a nice picture. If I hit the menu button, oh, I turned it off, doggone it. Okay, let's go to settings. I like to go to settings. And there's no defects on the screen, and the TV is looking good. So, that's a successful job. So let's power it off. We don't want to do that. I'll just I'll just unplug it because <laughs> I don't have the remote for me right now. It's over there. Just unplug it. Let's finish putting it together. Gonna clean the screen off. Call that customer that just called me and let them know. And come on and pick it up. Put that cover on. I'm not forgetting anything. I I am actually forgetting two screws. Two silver screws to hold down. The button assembly. The button IR assembly. Okay. That was it. Back cover back on. And of course you put the screws back in. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Please help my channel get going and hit hit the the uh, bell if you want to be notified when I put a new video up. All right, have a good day.